With the launch of Walkabout Mini Golf on PSVR, there are likely to be a lot of new players picking up the game. So whether you've just started with Walkabout Mini Golf or you've had it for a short while and are still getting to grips with it, it may be useful to go over the basics of what's available in the game and how it all works. With that in mind, here is an overview of the current and latest features in the game, correct at the time of the video, of course. Let's start with the shack. When you first load up, you'll see the home environment known as the shack, which is home to three main screens. The central of these hosts a list of courses, some available, some locked, and some purchasable DLC. There are currently eight free courses, each with an additional, more difficult nighttime variant, which is like an entirely new course in itself. These night versions are unlocked by scoring par or better, or by collecting enough lost balls on the easy version. Clicking on the details button for each course will show you the par, how many of the 18 lost balls you've collected, and on the hard course, how many clues you've found in the fox hunt, which we'll come to shortly. If you're not sure about any of the DLCs, there are a couple of try before you buy options. The first is preview mode, which lets you view the course as a whole from God mode, just to get an overview of how it's designed. And the other is guest pass. If somebody else you know has the DLC, they can invite you into a room to play the course with them. This means the course won't be available to play solo, but you can try it before you buy it. Let's talk about balls. You have a tray in front of you with the controls listed on it, so it's worth taking time to learn all the button functionality there, and this tray also holds your lost ball collection. On every hole of each easy course, there is a ball hidden somewhere around the playing or walking area. Once you find one, pick it up by pulling back on the thumbstick and it will be added to your collection, marked as found on your scorecard, and you'll see it come down the chute and onto your tray. Select the ball by pointing at it and pulling the trigger, R2 or L2 for the PSVR gang, and have fun by either popping them off the back of the tray or by smashing your head into them for some mindless chaos. On to putters. To the right you'll see your starting set of putters and these can be expanded by completing fox hunts on the hard courses. Every fox hunt starts with a clue on hole one of a hard course and you'll pick up the clues by again pulling back on the thumbstick. This is an excellent side game in Walkabout involving solving cryptic clues shown on your wrist display, eventually leading you to a new course themed putter which will then be available back at the shack. And if you'd like the whole family to try to solve the clues, good news is the fox hunt is available to repeat as soon as you've completed it. On next to avatars. To the right of the central course panel is the main control panel, which allows you to do a number of different things. One of these is to create your own custom avatar. By clicking on the avatar button, you'll be taken to the editor, where you can select from a range of standard and course theme styles, looks and accessories. Each player has a number of template slots in the head section, so if you have multiple styles or personalities to express, you don't need to stick with just one avatar. In addition to multiple avatars, if you have more than one user per headset in your household, you can create different profile save slots. This will store your best scores, settings, avatar designs, course unlocks, and putter and ball collections. So that's the basics out of the way, now how to get playing. The first way to get putting is by turning around to visit either the practice area, which you can freely putt around to get a feel for the mechanics and shot types, or by visiting the multi-bay driving range for some light target practice. Once you've got the swing of things, pun intended, it might be time to take on one of the full courses. At this point, as some of you may be new to golf in any form, it's worth mentioning here that the aim of the game is to complete a hole in as few shots as possible. There are areas which are considered inbounds, typically the coloured matte surfaces you play off, and other areas are out of bounds. In Walkabout, if your ball goes out of bounds, that shot counts towards your score, but the ball is replaced back to where you took the last shot from. Par is the term for the baseline target number of shots to finish a hole in. A birdie is earned by completing it in one shot less than par, an eagle for two shots under par, an albatross is three shots under par, and any better than that is just showing off. Almost every hole in Walkabout can and has been achieved in one shot at some point, so it's worth experimenting to see how much risk and reward there is in some of these more creative shot options. Now let's look at playing one of the available courses. To start off with, it may be worth playing solo, with most starting on Tourist Trap easy. 
To do this, click on the icon to bring up the course details and select Play Around. You'll then play the 18 holes in order with your score counting towards your personal bests. If you want to let the game pick a course for you, you can also select a random easy, hard or any from the shack. If you'd prefer to play in a less structured order, you can select practice mode from the shack instead, which allows you to play any combination of holes on the course in any order. As your scores aren't recorded here, you can also undo a shot by pulling back on the thumbstick, letting you play from the same position as you just did. If you want to play against someone with pass and play on the same headset, practice mode is currently the best way to do this. Once you're ready to take on your first opponent, you can select quick match from the control panel on the left. And after you're automatically paired with another player, you'll start a half round of nine holes on a randomly selected course. Don't worry if you're not feeding up to competition yet. On the whole, these are very friendly matchups and you'll likely either come up against another beginner or an experienced player who may be able to give you some pointers if you want them. And who knows, you may even be able to teach them a thing or two already. If you're not too keen on their input, there is an option to mute opponents from the scorecard by clicking on the speaker next to their name. There's also an option here to turn your own mic off. So if you really want to vent when they fluke a hole in one, maybe toggle this off first. If you wanted to set up a round with multiple other specific players, you can do so through a private room. If you're opening a room for others to join, enter your room name and it will create automatically, providing nobody else is using the same name. If you're joining a specific room, just do the same thing and you'll join their room if it's already open. The first player in the list will be able to pick the course and you'll then battle it out for pride, for joy or for childish forfeits where the loser has to change their name to something silly. On to the other functions of the game and first we have the wrist display. To keep tabs of your score, the time, fox hunt clues and the current hole while playing, simply turn your playing hand over as if to look at your watch. This brings up your wrist display and will be your go-to interface in game. Moving on now to the controls. The basic controls are pretty simple for walkabout. Starting with the trigger or R2-L2 button, which auto locates you to your current ball position and moves you onto the next hole. This is just about the only button you'll be needing to use for normal play. Next up, we have the grip button, which is R1 or L1, which can be used to prevent your ball from timing out when it goes off the course. This can be useful for trick shots, so be sure to keep this held until you're certain your ball isn't coming back into play. The A button, X or square for PSVR, takes you to giant view, where you can see an overview of the course and also the big scorecard. From here, you can also access in-game settings, which can be useful for tweaking your configuration during practice. Many of these are covered in my 15 tips to improve your game video, so I suggest watching that to understand how to set most of these for your playstyle. Pressing the B button, which is circle or triangle on PSVR, allows you to replay your last shot. This is helpful if you want to see what went right or wrong, or if you want to record a hole in one to post on YouTube. I don't know who would have the time to do that. Pressing the button again will simply cancel the replay and allow you to carry on playing. As already covered, pulling back on the thumbstick can be used for picking up lost balls and fox hunt clues, as well as cancelling a practice shot, but it can also spawn another ball from over your shoulder during practice mode, which you can then drop wherever you like. Moving the thumbstick forward controls character movement, which we'll look at in more details with the last two tips. By default, movement is performed by teleporting. This is easier on most people at first through the avoidance of any motion sickness risk. To teleport, push the thumbstick forward while pointing at a place to go and release once you're happy with where you're heading. If you just want to teleport to your ball, simply pull the trigger. In settings, you can enable smooth locomotion, which will move you freely instead of in teleported steps. If you are brand new to VR, this may feel funny at first, as you might not yet have what is known as your VR legs. This is a term used to describe being used to seeing movement in VR, which you're not feeling in the real world, and smooth locomotion where your character is moving, but you personally are not, is an example of this. Some people are more vulnerable to motion sickness than others, so take it easy at first with this setting and stop for a pause if you start to feel uneasy. You can increase the speed once you get more used to the feeling, right up to a fairly rapid five meters per second. 
Once you've got your horizontal VR legs, it may be time to gain your vertical legs. In 2021, Walkabout Mini Golf also became Flyabout Mini Golf, with the option to take to the skies from any point in the course and explore completely freely. At no point in the Lost Ball searches or fox hunts will you be required to fly, so don't worry if it's not for you. To take off, simply point your club up to the sky, push forward on the thumbstick, and after a second of vibration, you'll be up and away. Incidentally, if you're not so comfortable with motion sickness, your last meal may be up and away too, so again, take it easy. Once you're flying, push forward on the thumbstick and point your club in the direction you want to go, and you'll glide your way around the full course. There's no gravity to bring you back down to earth, so you won't need to worry about falling, but when you're ready to return to ground, either fly back down until you feel a soft landing, or just pull the trigger to teleport back into your putting reality. So that's it to get started with Walkabout Mini Golf. Once you've become familiar with the functionality, I highly recommend watching my 15 tips to improve your game video, as well as a growing collection of course guides and hole-in-one guides I have available. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Please like the video if you found it helpful, share it with any new players you meet, drop a comment down below if there's something you want to say, and subscribe to stay informed of future channel content. Best of luck with your walkabout journey, and I look forward to seeing you out on the course.